All right, Wes, you know the drill. Say and spell first and last name. Thank you for your time. Okay, uh, my name is Wes White, W-E-S-W-H-I-T-E. -E. I am the president of the Salinas Homeless Union. What happened here? Um, so so we, we've got a little bit of legacy going. Uh, a couple months ago, both uh, Women Alive and uh, TMZ announced closures to two facilities, uh, Women Alive and the warming shelter. The Women Alive actually closed, so there, there went 30 women. They, most of those women went to the warming shelter. The warming shelter got an extra 30 days. Uh, that ran out the May 30th. May 30th, we opened our doors because there's nowhere for these refugees to be. Um, absolutely, it, is, it, it takes months to get something permitted and, and the amount of money that it takes to do that. I got uh, violated for conditional use permit. I, I, it's, it's not zoned residential overnight. It's zoned commercial office space. So um, that creates quite a dilemma because there's absolutely nowhere for women to go. There's nowhere for families to go. And, the, and these are the refugees from the warming shelter. The, uh, everybody from, most everybody from there came over here and uh, who couldn't have anywhere else to go. So uh, there's a major necessity defense in this. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I, we can use this in, in a court of law. Uh, women, luckily, tonight were able... Uh, Women's Alive is going to do an impromptu, temporary, maybe only for tonight. Uh, so, so crisis has been averted for tonight. Uh, we, we won't have to, um, you know, worry about <laughs> staging a, um, a civil action or anything like that tonight. Uh, but it, it is still impending because our, our ultimate need and objective is making sure that, that people do have a place to go. Women do not have a place to go, family, some of these families. One family got picked up, another family has not. Um, th these are people in great need. And, and we're looking for community support. We're looking for elected official support. We're looking for top administration support. We're looking for that political will. Right now, the political will is from, from uh, if, if you look at the TAMZ meeting and, and the Chamber of Commerce, and even this, uh, the CBC here in, in Chinatown, the Chinatown business community. Um, all these business entities are, are putting everybody in the same position of what they're discriminating against, of their worst case uh, interactions with people. And, and that's, it, it's just discriminatory, unfortunately, in, in my opinion. It, it's just open discrimination is what it is. Uh, and, um, you know, we, we need to be coalescing. I, I, I talk to just about every county supervisor and I talk to every, uh, I talk to probably five council members. And, uh, and they, they've all been out of boy, out of boy, but we, we, we're still lacking that political will to make it happen. This happened in less than a week uh, of getting tagged. How, how, how proactive can you be when, when so many other violations have gone neglected and ignored, and yet this one is a, being a top priority? Why would that be? So I guess the argument, and you know I, I think everything that you do for the homeless community is great and everything, so I want to say that before I ask this. But why didn't um, you get the permits beforehand and stuff? You kind of touch on this, but can you talk about it before? So I, I was directed to get a temporary use, uh, and uh, and I went down to the building, and uh, they, they are very certain that I need a conditional use. Uh, the temporary use, because it's temporary and emergency, it's an emergency and it's temporary, it's going to be done before November 1st. Uh, but and that would only cost two hundred fifty dollars. That was doable uh, when it when it came to emphatically the conditional use permit, and that's just to open the application of the process without any handholding from from city officials, anybody. Um, at fifty three hundred dollars, it it sounded like like a, a huge loss, you know. And and uh, I, I without that support, I didn't feel confident. We're comfortable trying to ask somebody to give me $5,300 for the application. Um, so, so I've been trying to go back to the elected officials and top administration. And, uh, you know, I, I think it still goes back to, to the same thing. What are they listening to? Well, they're, they're listening to the part that says public safety and business revenue, tax revenue. Um, that, that's the sense of the community that's really got their ear. And yet there's a whole larger population that, that still needs their help too, their public service entity. And, and we, we as, as a teacher, myself, 
I've got to be able to take care of every single student in that classroom, from from the, the one who's completely independent and the one that, that needs all kinds of help and redirection, you know, and still be able to manage everybody. Uh, and I have to do that quickly, you know. And, and that that I feel is a, is a role of every public service entity, and they they they've chosen not to to help be helpful to actually fulfill their, their public service duty obligations. And they, they've made a conscious choice in, in favor, and, and, you know, I think of the business interest. I, I think back to when the Excel Grindhouse was there and, uh, and, the, and the guy got bludgeoned with a bat. You know what happened that, that Christmas? <laughs> the downtown, uh, some, of, some of the people from the association were joking about, hey, maybe, maybe we should give out bats for Christmas gifts. You know, but, but this is the mentality we're up against. And this is this is this is why I'm saying that, that I feel like I'm being, if not um, acceleratedly discretionarily looked at, but actually discriminatorily looked at, because these people are poor, and so so uh, you know we, we get all the isms that are associated. Nobody in here is doing drugs. No nobody in here is stealing anything. You know so so they're not criminals. They're not drug addicts. They're just people who need a warm place to sleep at night. And that's all we're trying to do is, you know, if food is down the way, showers are over there, we're not cooking anything, nobody smokes, uh, you know, there's no way, no risk of fire. Seriously, I mean, you know, it, my chance of getting hit by a bus is, is big, better chances in this place going up in smoke because no, nobody's doing anything like that. I don't know whether or not you guys were put up to the top of the priority list or not because I have reached out to the government and have not heard back from them. I'm getting your side of this, but um, at the same time, they have the legal right to do this, unfortunately. Yes. But um, so when they came and did this, were you surprised per se? I was surprised. That I, you know what? Like I said, I, I talked to um, four council members before it, it even started, including the mayor, and uh, and and I told them exactly what I'm doing, and uh, and I, I got nothing but hey, that's that's wonderful. You know, that's that's, that's wonderful. Uh, and and so I, you know, I got a verbal support from people. Um, including the mayor, uh, but but then again, it's unofficially, officially unofficial because you know who am I? I'm I'm not even a nonprofit organization. Uh, you know, how can they enter into contract with just a citizen? Um, so liability issue becomes the, the key. Um, not not getting the permission beforehand. Uh, if if you look at the violations, it says smoke detectors, carbon monoxide, uh, fire extinguishers. And uh, and expose wiring to to an unpermitted addition that, that is going to be taken out, and that also reduces the ingress egress. You have to have two exits. Uh, so so there that's all the mitigated things except for the permit and and the conditional use zone appropriately. Can you get this stuff taken care of? You think by the date that they have on there, which I believe is the twentieth, right? I uh, I can we we can have everything else mitigated, but the permitting because no matter what, the permitting is going to take at least three to six months. And people are dying now. Uh, we're saving lives every night, and we're saving people from drowning. And and what what the city is asking people to do is no, no, just sit under the water until we're ready to take care of you. And by then they're dead. That's not helping anything. Thank you, Wes. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you.